Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it, and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today, we're discussing one of the 2017 Omega Basel World launches, the Omega Speedmaster Racing, a coaxial master chronometer in stainless steel, 44.25 millimeters in diameter. It's the size and footprint of, for example, the dark side of the moon, but it features a degree of, I would say, joie de vivre, as well as color and character that you don't get on even the dark side with its somewhat grievous demeanor. It's a brooding watch. This one is light, airy, and cheerful. Now you can see the timepiece, 15.3 millimeters thick, is not exactly thick and not exactly thin, but the defining trait of its case like is that cantilevered, flared tachymeter bezel, so it will hang up on a tight sleeve. Better to fit this one underneath a jacket cuff and be satisfied there. Lug to lug, it's not a big bully. Though it is a 44 plus, it's only 49 9.8 millimeters lug to lug, so I can actually endorse this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference, and you can see my 16 centimeters circumference wrist is having no issue here. The spacing between the lugs is 21 millimeters, so the watch has a nice modern look. In general, a modern watch is going to have a broader lug spacing, usually 21 or 22, and this is a watch very much in step with the style of our times. The strap is a nice piece because it's clever. You can see it's a perforated vintage racing style, as well as a wonderful two-tone, but with a clever internal color band. So there's no actual color externally, but you can see there's definitely an orange tone internally. Nicely executed and bolstered alongside the lugs. They hold up well against the case visually. It's a good match between lug and strap width. It's a supple material, calfskin top and bottom. Omega's deployment clasp will be well known to fans of the brand, but it's worth mentioning that it's both double finished with satin and polished and blessed with a twin trigger system that you must depress on each side equally to release so it's very secure. There's also a minderless architecture going on here, which is why you can simply size the watch, tuck excess length underneath the clasp. Now there's no need for minder loops and no excess length flapping in the breeze. Omega's been doing this for a while, but that doesn't mean I take it for granted. Most brands will not give you a clasp that well thought out. The case band is familiar. Satin finished on its flanks, flared and polished on its bevels. We've known some form of this case since roughly the 1965 initial pro versions of the Speedmaster. And you can see that there's also a little bit of a countersink to the chronograph pushers and crown in that classical shear guard fashion. It's not quite a crown guard, it's more of a shear guard to prevent you from accidentally scraping the assemblies off the side of the case. The bezel is metal and polished on its underside, but the insert is ceramic. The timepiece features a liquid metal material that's actually fused with the ceramic, so everything you see that looks like a metallic calibration, the characters, the numerals, the indices, that is in fact metal, co-bonded and forever part of that ceramic bezel. Ceramic insert, very scratch resistant. Box section cambered sapphire, both more expensive than a flat sapphire and very scratch resistant. The dial, it's a matte black with sunken registers. It features a mono counter and you can see both chronograph minutes and hours on the register at three o'clock. So it has that handsome vintage twin register look as well as a bilateral symmetry when split 12 to six. There's a date aperture at six o'clock and you can see that the watch does feature an array of almost checkered flag style staggered hash marks for the chronograph outboard, and that is the root of the nickname Racing. First seen on Omega chronographs in the late 1960s, it's been issued alternately with a black and white dial color scheme and the more traditional and one might say more definitive white, black, and orange color scheme you see here. When most folks think of the racing dial, they do think of the orange tones, not the black and white. You'll also appreciate the fact that the watch has both hacking or stop seconds and a time zone feature that allows you to actually set the hour hand independently without stopping the chronograph time, the minutes, or the seconds. And you can see you can actually set the date forward or backwards as you cross the international date line. You still have that hacking seconds function when you pull the crown to extremity. You can set to the second. The watch with a vertical clutch architecture, so the seconds hand always starts without a jump and stops without stagger and always resets precisely and exactly to the index at 12. There's no play a la lateral clutch. It also features a column wheel system. And you can see that the column wheel is visible underneath a skeletonized portion of the bridge just just above, which is germane to the winding system. So the winding bridge has been evacuated to show you the column wheel. It's one of the best feeling column wheel mechanisms in the industry. 50 meters water resistant. This is a master chronometer tested through the eight 
individual tests of the METAS chronometer certification developed between Omega and the Swiss Federal Institute of Metrology. It incorporates the old COSC timing, but it also adds another position of testing to the five, and it's a fully cased up watch test. It includes anti-magnetic resistance, winding efficiency, power reserve, water resistance, and six position chronometry. And yes, the timepiece does have an SI14 silicon hairspring, so it's effectively amagnetic to beyond 1.5 Tesla. Full balance bridge and a free sprung index for shock resistance. The movement features twin mainspring barrels, giving it a very even torque release from max wind to minimum wind. That's the main reason you go with twin barrels. Excellent timing from beginning to end of power reserve, but objectively the power reserve is longer than most at 60 hours. The watch features a coaxial escapement tri-level, and it is the Daniels system devised by the late great master himself, industrialized by Omega, the tri-level system with tangential contact, improving the timing of the watch, the power reserve, as well as reducing the maintenance intervals necessary. You can see the sensational Speedmaster Racing and make it yours on the watch box. Racing through the dark. At 25,200 vibrations per hour, Speedmaster Racing.